The Duchy of Cornwall, the land and property of the Prince of Wales, is so big that it affects the lives of everyone in this southwestern corner of England. When the Duchy applies for permission for a new project, it always gets its way. Sometimes, local politicians try to oppose what the Duchy wants to do. They say they find it as secretive as it is powerful. The information, if you like, comes out, you know, trickle, trickle, and what they want is to know, you know, in this day and age, you know, in this century, you know, anything to do with, you know, with the monarchy, or the monarch, monarch son and so on, should be open and transparent, and the people should know what's going on there. And uh, you think in Cornwall it isn't? No, it, no, it isn't. The duchy is worth well over a billion dollars. The projects it develops, the philosophy that underpins them, are designed to mirror the views of Prince Charles himself. But should he really be doing this sort of thing at all? There's certainly no doubting the financial muscle of the Duchy of Cornwall and opponents of it, opponents of the Prince of Wales here, say that it's become so big that it's able directly to influence political and economic decisions, often against the interests of people who live here. Opponents of the Prince of Wales in London say the very same thing applies on the national level as well, and they say that raises serious questions about the conduct of the man who will one day be king. The rule set in stone is that the monarchy in Britain is apolitical. Yet not only does the Queen meet the Prime Minister every week, but Charles is known to write to and meet ministers regularly on issues which he is concerned about. His critics say it's in direct breach of his powers to project his opinions onto people who didn't elect him. He has a rather curious mind, uh, sort of world view of, you know, which is kind of a combination of, you know, um, traditional Christian values and Eastern mysticism and sort of this kind of holistic environmentalism that, uh, you know, puts him in the sort of the uh, the manor house with his, his serfs plough in the field, and that's kind of his mentality. His supporters, meanwhile, argue that the people expect the future king to exercise some opinions and join in the national debates. The prince, who is somewhat of a gadfly, putting independent views. So long as it's not party political, he has the right to do it. If we don't want him to do it, then we ought to define what being Prince of Wales actually is and should mean. But if it means simply attending reviews and opening things, include him out. At a time when support for the British monarchy is far outstripping faith in politicians, the debate over Charles' finances and his politics runs against the grain of popular opinion. The fact it's being investigated at all suggests the establishment itself wants to clear up what may become an image problem in the future. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera, in Cornwall.